Hello, my name is David Hatch from Process Safety Integrity. Welcome to my Hazards 32 presentation, Analyzing and Managing Flammable Atmosphere Risks Using OTIs. Traditionally, flammable atmosphere risk assessments have been done in tabular format, similar to how we conduct HAZOP and PHAs, and we may typically use Word or Excel to document the discussions, but these tabular formats may have a number of weaknesses. It's possible that you could wrongly assign um, controls or safeguards to the wrong cause or threat or ignition source because you've grouped these controls into a single cell or block. Similarly, you could have missed those controls from the appropriate ignition source. It may be that the documentation doesn't distinguish between prevention and mitigation or recovery measures, and where you wish to consider secondary ignition or secondary explosion from connected equipment, then that may not be so obvious in an isolated tabular format. And really, like most analyses, the presence and performance of the controls or safeguards is not necessarily considered in the assessment. We make assumptions that those safeguards or those controls will always be there and they will always be effective, but that's only a snapshot of where you believe you are or where you will be. So the bowtie approach aims to bring a visual approach, a graphical approach, and use barrier thinking to provide duty holders, stakeholders with the full context of the flammable atmospheres and the explosions associated with them so they can more fully appreciate the contributions, criticality and the vulnerability of the measures, whether they be prevention measures to avoid the ignition source or mitigation or recovery measures to reduce the effects. And particularly where you have facilities or countries where those at the front line who are maintaining or sustaining these controls or ignition controls are perhaps not fully conversant in risk management terminology or perhaps where English isn't their first language the visual approach of the bow tie helps to address that. So there are a number of um, outcomes from the ignition of a flammable atmosphere. It can generate flames and hot gases. It can generate heat or thermal radiation. Uh, the explosion can generate a pressure wave that may lead to flying debris or hazardous release of materials so the, the combustion products may themselves be toxic. And we can have effects on people, and that's obviously our, our key focus is to protect life. But you may also experience the damage to plant or equipment or buildings. And there may be secondary effects where one ignition or one explosion, one combustion uh, becomes an ignition source for a connected piece of equipment or connected flammable atmosphere. So typically, uh, in simple terms, how we would mitigate the effects on people, we would control the flammable atmosphere, try and eliminate or reduce its likelihood. We would aim to contain the explosion or if it can be contained to suppress it so the overpressure doesn't increase, or we may discharge that overpressure to a safe location. And then to protect people, if we exclude or limit the time that they are present, then there's less likelihood of actually injuring somebody. Similar considerations for the impact on assets, plant equipment structures that could be damaged, they are generally there all of the time, so the occupancy or the exposure um, doesn't contribute to the overall risk reduction. But the other measures, the containment, the suppression, the venting, the control of atmospheres, uh, does.
And then lastly, how do we prevent transmission to a connected system? Um, obviously, we want to um, suppress the uh, the explosion. Although you could contain the explosion, um, the the heat or the energy could still be transmitted to a secondary system. So we want to suppress that or to isolate it. So have some means to isolate the primary and the secondary locations. And we have a very useful list of potential ignition sources from BSEN 1127 part one. So this document for explosive atmospheres, explosion prevention and protection gives 13 different possible ignition sources ranging from the obvious hot surfaces and flames and hot gases down to adiabatic compression and the exothermic reactions. They may be less common, but they are still competent ignition sources with the potential to cause these um, fires and explosions. Also within that standard, Clause 6 within EN 1127 gives a list of potential risk reduction. So here we see for each of the 13 ignition sources what could be potential um, prevention measures, whether it be avoidance, control, um, etc. So here we've got um, for hot surfaces, flames, hot gases, sparks, the more familiar um, ignition sources. And then going through the subsequent sources, electrical apparatus, you know, electrostatic influences, how are we going to prevent them from becoming credible, competent, effective ignition sources? Because they have to have the appropriate energy in order to ignite that flammable atmosphere. Going through lightning, um, electromagnetic waves, other radiation, again, these are all taken from the same clause six of 11.27. And then lastly, the, the less common ultrasonics, adiabatic compression, exothermic, very process specific, depending on the materials and the sensitivity of the materials that you are handling. The advantage of bow ties and, and the barrier thinking associated with bow ties is that you can show much more information. You can show the likelihood or the potential for each type of ignition source, whether it may only occur um, rare when you have an equipment malfunction or it may be common as part of normal operation. So effectively, you've got a threat likelihood here. And also you can show the effectiveness or the performance of the control measures or the prevention barriers, whether they are good, very good, um, poor, based on your evidence, your maintenance records, your audits, your um, records to give you a sense of the robustness of your um, protection portfolio. On the other side, you've got the means to mitigate the explosion. And, and here we've got controlling the flammable atmosphere. How are you going to control that? Are you going to um, use ventilation? Are you, are you going to use um, less material, etc., etc.? So a variety of different means of how you control that flammable atmosphere. And then, you know, there may be some opportunities, whether it's containment, venting, suppression, some of these may not be applicable. And then you've got a sense of the scale of the consequences. So major could be multiple fatalities, minor could be, you know, short term uh, return to service. Um, and you can also show whether you've met the risk criteria, depending on the severity and, and likelihood of the um, flammable atmosphere ignition. So you can incorporate risk matrices, for example, one risk matrix for people, one risk matrix for assets, or whatever works for your um, corporate strategy. Here's the big picture view, all 13 potential ignition sources. The ones that are not credible and not applicable are white. 
same for the barriers, either the prevention measures, controlling the ignition sources or mitigation measures where they are not applicable, then they can be made white so they're less prominent. Then condensing this down, only showing the relevant ignition sources, the applicable barriers, you get a much clearer view. And you'll see here that at this point, you can add more detail on the materials that you're handling, the dust group, the flash point, auto ignition temperature, etc. All that's relevant in terms of the potential and, and scale of um, ignition. Now, it's important to be consistent and objective in the way that you determine the effectiveness, good, bad, very bad, etc., for your barriers. And here's a simple example where essentially you're considering the people, the process and the plant. How capable are the, the personnel associated with the barrier? How good is the documentation? How well is it maintained? So based on those three simple elements, you can get a sense of um, how effective your barrier is. So things to consider in the effectiveness, the capability, both physical and mental, of those involved in the barrier maintenance or, or support, how valid and how up to date the documentation is, and how often and how well you actually conduct your maintenance on that barrier. Similarly, as a mitigation measure, um, or essentially it's prevention, but it's shown here as a mitigation measure, how well are you controlling your flammable atmosphere? So how often does a flammable atmosphere occur? How long does it last? What grade of ventilation do you have? So the better the ventilation, then you know the, the greater potential there is to um, dilute the um, concentration of the flammable material. So again, using a um, objective approach, um, how the effectiveness is graded. One of the benefits of the bow tie approach is that you can chain bow ties together. So in simple terms, the consequence from one bow tie becomes a threat on another bow tie. Here, um, we have um, a ignition uh, in, in one location which then becomes a potential ignition source for a secondary location. So this consequence becomes the threat on an upstream or downstream piece of equipment. And what you really want to do is to exploit your analysis to make it as live and as, as, as fresh as possible. So when we do analyses, we make a number of assumptions, a number of estimates. Um, very often these are generic because we don't have any historical data to use. But understanding the sensitivity of these estimates can help you get a sense of where you are in your risk profile. Similarly, there's a presumption that your barriers are going to be perfect, um, but in reality they will degrade, and generally they degrade as soon as they go into service. So if they're operated outside their capabilities, if they're not maintained, or for example, you've got a greater occupancy than what you assumed, there are more people there who could be injured, that all has effect on your risk outcome. And then if you don't manage change, if you don't have control of your modifications, then they could be um, your barriers or your controls could be permanently de deleted or they could be temporarily overridden or defeated. All these play a part in how you protect against these um, ignition of flammable atmospheres. So the conclusion is that bow ties, whether it be in major accident hazards scenarios or in this case for understanding um, flammable atmospheres, um, they are proven to be an effective tool to engage less technical stakeholders. These are the people on the front line that you rely on to protect themselves and others and your asset. And fundamentally, 
you can't manage what you don't understand. This helps with that level of understanding. It gives a robust visual framework to ensure that the effectiveness of the controls, whether they be organizational, technical, human and hardware, to get a better sense of their presence and performance so you are confident you are actually providing the necessary risk reduction and you continue to provide that risk reduction. And fundamentally, analyzing the problem as you would do in a conventional assessment or PHA or, or HAZOP style. Analyzing is very much a snapshot. What you want is ongoing barrier assurance to, to get that confidence to demonstrate that you are constantly in control, that you understand the behaviors of your process and that you are always in control. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please contact me directly at david.hatch at psintegrity.com. Thank you very much.